welcome back to the Home Stitchery Decor YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to sew another rug, um, just because it's been a while and I figured, hey, why not? This one's a pretty color and it's time to get back into the groove of doing things uh, on my YouTube channel. I've had a little bit of a break and, uh, you know, had COVID and all that kind of stuff. So now it's almost the new year. It's the end of 2022 and I've got some big things planned for this year. So we're going to hit it off by uh, today sewing another rug. So I'll just give you a quick uh, kind of tour around here on this side of the studio. Um, this is what you're going to see in the background as I'm sewing the rug. Um, this is where I have all my, uh, basically my product set up, right? So I can have a company come in here and they can shop and I can quickly uh, pull from this side of the studio as well all of the goodies that I make and either ship them off to my stores or um, send them off to my Etsy orders or put them onto uh, my Shopify store. So here's a quick look around. Um, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I have another, a whole Christmas collection. And if you go on the website and check uh, um, the catalog section in the top, uh, it'll be the top left-hand corner. I have everything separated now by section. So it's tea towels, uh, dish drying mats, soup bowl cozies, rugs, pillows. And of course, I've got some new things in the work for this year as well. And then at the very bottom of that one is the Christmas. So you can see a whole bunch of Christmas stuff there. And then, of course, uh, the rugs. Now, if you saw me at the Millerville Christmas Market, you know that the rugs went quick. And oh my goodness, I'm so glad I sewed so many of them. So these are the, um, what they call jelly roll rugs. Um, I call them modern farmhouse rugs, uh, just because I don't always use a jelly roll for them as I'm doing so many. Um, I need to have, oh, I guess, different names for them. So anyway, uh, this is the studio itself. It is a bit of a mess as I am getting uh, things back in order from having some, basically some time off over Christmas. And today we're going to sew this rug here. So I'm going to turn the camera around and get it set up on the other station. Let's get started. Okay, Jolene here again with Home Stitchery Decor. So uh, now we're going to start sewing our rug and I just wanted to go over a couple of tips for you. Uh, first, I'm gonna use a Schmetz uh, 116 jeans needle. I'm going to use my Singer Heavy Duty machine. Um, this machine is a basic machine. You can get them on Amazon. I will put the links in for them. I believe you can also get them from Sewing World, so I'll put a link in for them as well. And this basically is a pretty much basic, basic, basic machine, and it has a zigzag stitch on it. So it has a lot of muscle for not a lot of money, and I find that it's perfect for doing my rugs. I've sewn hundreds of rugs on them. Um, this is, I think... I think this is the third one that I've gone through now, um, but I'm sewing them en masse, right? So uh, when I want uh, to sew my rugs, I don't want to have a computerized machine for that because I know dang well uh, with the, um, the, the, just the depth of the rug and how thick this is, um, I'm going to go through um, computerized machines just as quick as I go through uh, basic machines. So I basically use the machine until the gears wear out and then I get a new machine. And even if the gears wear out to the point that it won't do the zigzag properly, I still repurpose the machine until it's actually, um, I had one like that literally caught on fire after I had it for, oh gosh, years. So um, anyway, this is a Singer Heavy Duty machine. This is the exact machine I do make to do these rugs. I'm gonna show you exactly how I start to sew the rugs. So there's no... Um, you know, oh, she's, you know, she's cheating or she's got professional equipment or anything like that. Um, so that being said, these are the tubes. This is the fabric that's mitered end to end first. And then there's batting put into the middle of the, um, into the middle and it's folded twice basically and sewn into a tube, which you can see right here. So the straight stitch along the edge is holding 
the batting inside of here. Now, I use uh, Pellon batting. I just uh, get it literally at Fabricland. Um, I buy the bolt that, or the big package of it, that's $189. I think it actually went to $205 this year. And then I wait for them to have a sale where it's 50% off. And then I go buy a bunch of it and I cut it into strips with my AccuQuilt uh, cutting machine. I have a studio and uh, the big die plate thing for that. So um, this is how I'm being able to do these en masse. Now, uh, new this year at Home Stitchery Decor, I am also um, able to do things a lot quicker because I hired some dang help. Woohoo! Yes, it's true. I hired some help. So there was a sewing company that was looking for some work. Uh, it's a family owned business. It's in Northwest Calgary, um, just like 20 minutes north of downtown. And uh, they had put an ad up saying that they were uh, coming out here from BC and looking to settle into some new work. And so I took them some work and I asked them to get me some pricing on it. And what I've started with with them is sewing the uh, tubes of the rugs. So uh, this is my most time consuming project. And if you look on my website, you'll see that there's actually you know, a million different things going on. There's now print on demand with my own textile designs. Um, there's rugs, 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 rugs. There's a whole Christmas collection. Uh, this year I'm going to be adding some new products in. I'm not going to announce what they are yet. Um, because I never do that until they're actually there. Or people will be like, Hey lady, um, <laughs> there goes my dog. I shouldn't have knocked on the table. Um, so anyway, uh, I do have some help now. They sew the strips for me and basically they give them back to me and then I'm able to sew the zigzag of the rugs round and round and round. And uh, what else? Okay, so we've got the machine. We've got this huge table. You can get the, uh, these large extension tables with the drop downs from Sewing World. I'll put a link in for them as well. Um, anything that you buy through a link, I get paid. It's fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing that. It's really starting to roll now. Um, it's been a hard, long slog at this crafting business. So anytime anybody spends a penny with me, I am so grateful. Uh, I get to stay home with my barking Cocker Spaniel. Okay, so another thing I'm going to tell you guys is uh, please don't roll these up into balls. I know a lot of uh, the makers that are making these rugs, they have this cute little picture of all of their um, fabric rolled and then rolled like this and then rolled like this and then rolled like this and then they have them in these cute little balls, right? So they've rolled all their fabric into a ball, just like this. And then they put it like this and they come back three days later and they wanna go sew their rug and they can't figure out why their rug is doing this. I, I don't understand why people keep telling you to do this. You are training your fabric to be twisted by doing that, training it. So it's gonna sit there for a week, for a month, whatever, until you get back to doing whatever you wanna do. Um, and then it's it's twisted. You would never see a professional designer pull luxury fabric off of a bolt and scrunch it up like this and then put it in the corner and then, you know, have a beautiful gown made out of it. It just doesn't happen that way. So please stop doing that. Um, I've had countless questions about how I get them so flat. I'm literally going to show you. Um, but if you start off with quality materials, with quality batting, with a machine that's got enough oomph to do the job, you're going to have some success. So um, basically what I do is I clean my floor, clean it, um, you know, swiffer it, wash it with a wet pad, whatever you need to do in your sewing room, clean your floor, and then uh, put all of this in a great big pile. I'm even gonna show you now, just so you know that I'm not even lying about this. I just put this stuff in a great big pile in a basket on the floor. So as it pulls out, if it happens to come out of the basket and it, you know, catches something off the floor, I'm not sewing dust into my rug. So here we go, into the basket it went. Okay, so now how we get started. And I know this is probably not that complicated, but I'm gonna show you anyway, the first, strip I have I'm going to go until the seam so there is the seam and even though I have two of the same color I'm just going to go to this first seam so I fold it in thirds 
with the the um, folded edge out. The next folded edge is going to get buttered up to here. And I'm just going to play with it a little bit until I get it into thirds. So if it's too short here, see it's too short. There's the seam right here. I'm just going to go back and adjust the top here a little bit. So redo it. Now, of course, I've done hundreds of these, so I'm getting pretty good at it. I can kind of tell where the seam's going to be. And I just need like a tiny little smidge. There we go. It's perfect. Okay, so now we have the folded edge out here. We've got the next folded edge in here, and we're just going to go to our sewing machine and uh, get started on this project. So my head's going to be turned a little bit, but this way you guys get the whole uh, view here of what's happening with the machine. I've got it on a wide zigzag, and uh, my stitch length on this exact machine is at uh, three and a half over here on this style. So just a zigzag stitch. Now, I set it underneath the um, presser foot here, and I don't start right at the top here. I actually am gonna zigzag back and then forward again, so everything's secure. All right, another trick I like to do is to have this large uh, cutting mat, and it basically covers the hole or the gap here between my sewing machine and my table. Um, sometimes the holes in these are not the perfect size for every machine, so I'm just using a little make-do here. Okay, this is it. We're off to the races. We're going to sew a rug. So we've gone back. Now we're going forward. Now when I'm sewing here, I have the... Um, the opening here, just a little bit left of the opening in the presser foot. So this way, when I'm doing the zigzag, I'm actually making sure that I catch the folded part on the underneath as well, because you can see it on the top, um, but if you don't have it put in there properly, uh, you might miss the folded part um, on the bottom. And then you can even, you know, kind of give the folded part just a little bit, a little bit of a twist up here and in so that it catches properly. So we've come up to the first corner. The first thing I do is give myself some tension or release the tension, make sure it's nice and flat. I'm going to fold the fabric around the corner. And now with my fingers, I'm going to squish and press and squish and press and squish and press, squish and press the inside so that the outside here is flat. Just go nice and slow around the corner, pick up your presser foot if you need to. And then as you come around the corner, you might notice that it's bulked up a little bit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push up on the inside, push up on the inside of this fabric here and that will release this to lay down flat. Just trim off any threads as you come up to them. And again, I should actually zoom in on this part for you guys, maybe. Can I do that? No, I can't. Okay, hang on. So we're just going to push it in, pick up our presser foot, give it a twist around, push this side down flat, and then push the center in a little bit just to release it. off we go again. Now you'll see here 
but this has got a little bit of a, a pucker in it. I'm going to bring this a little closer for a second here, just so you can see. This one's got a little bit of a fold in it. So push it down, push, 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 push this one, give it a little release in the um, tension and just feed it around the corner. So squish and press on the inside. Not too much so it's got a huge fold, but just enough to ease it around the corner. And off we go again. I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite projects to do. I absolutely love sewing these jelly roll rugs now, or what I call my modern farmhouse jelly roll rug. Um, I just find this so relaxing. When I get going on here and, you know, I've got some Netflix going or some music going in the office, I just find this so, so, so relaxing. So this exact fabric I actually got from Missouri Star and I can put a link in the video description for you. Um, I'm not really an affiliate for Missouri Star. It's uh, I think it's just like a friends and family um, discount code that they give pretty much anyone. And another great place that I find uh, jelly rolls at is Connecting Threads. And I'm actually an affiliate for Connecting Threads. They have some great stuff going on there. Um, you know, uh, just coordinated collections like you wouldn't believe. And they often have sales and whatnot, so I will put a link in the video description for that. I'm an affiliate for them, so I will get paid if you purchase fabric through them. Uh, I know a lot of people have been struggling since fabric.com was shut down which I was actually pretty disappointed about as well because I did get some good deals from fabric.com. Uh, this year though, there's gonna be some more changes around here. And I might as well tell you while I'm sewing this rug because we're gonna be here for a while, but um, I am actually uh, designing my own textile line. So that will be out and on fabric um, pretty shortly. I'm gonna use uh, spoon flour right now. So if you go check out the Home Stitchery Decor Store on Spoonflower, there will be uh, some fabric coming up there. I already have some wallpaper going on in some of the designs. And then on my website, you will see the designs on other products, um, like shower curtains and um, dish towels, table runners, Christmas tree skirts, um, there's going to be a whole Christmas line as well. I'm already working on that. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different patterns with snowflakes and trees. Already up and running on the store. You can check it out on my website as, uh, as it gets better and bigger. Of course, I'll be able to work on it, concentrate more time on it. And it's also on Etsy. I know some people are more comfortable shopping on Etsy than they are on an independent person's website. Um, anywhere you want to shop for me, I am more than happy to help you out. So that's great too. And anytime I'm over here, I'm just making sure that there's no tension and that this is not twisted. Okay, and can you see what it's doing here? This is a twist nightmare for me. So I'm just gonna pause the camera for a minute and go through my basket here and just kind of swirl this all around and unwind a little bit for it. Okay, I'll be right back. 
Okay, I'm back. What a nightmare. Um, I don't like my fabric twisted at all. And I think what's happening now uh, that I've had to think about it, because I'm like, this didn't happen to me before. Uh, but I think because I've hired these uh, this company to sew, uh, when they put it in the bag to give it back to me, it was kind of all just rolled up like a snake. So it must be a little bit of their uh, process a little bit different than mine. Uh, so I definitely don't want my fabric twisted. So I guess I'll just have to do that uh, when they give the stuff back so that I can sew the rubs, rugs, rugs, rugs flat. Anyway, so uh, back to sewing. You can see we've left off in the exact same place here, just rounding the corner. And I want to make sure that everything is super flat. So I took a minute to make sure. And I also don't want to stall the video out on you guys. I know your time is valuable. So I appreciate every single second that you watch. Uh, like the channel, give it a thumbs up, make it a nice comment, uh, those kind of things. It's so funny, I was telling my friend, every, almost every time I make a video, I say to people, don't leave any nasty comments because literally nobody cares. Nobody cares. And uh, yeah, I mean, we can moderate uh, the comments that come in on our YouTube channels anyway. So if you don't have something nice to say, um, make your own channel. All right, so this one here, I think, it, um, as I mentioned, it was from Missouri Star. And I want to say it was Americana something or other. Is the, the fabric line. Now, when I did this one, um, I just gave my uh, team there the Jelly Roll Unraveled. I really wanted uh, a couple of rugs where there were, it wasn't so random, but they rather would have chunks of color. So I let them pull it off the jelly roll just as it came. And I actually made one and have it in my own kitchen in this color. So I was quite excited uh, with how that one turned out. And now this is the second one I'm gonna sew in there. Now, another change that's gonna be coming this year um, is the quantity of the rugs that I sell in each color. It is a lot of work uh, to sew the rugs and then photograph everything, format everything for the internet and post the listings. So as I've grown and expanded here with my business, I am now um, able to purchase fabric in bulk. So in bolts and um, multiple bolts of same colors, which is super exciting. I don't know if you've been here for a while, but I'm on my uh, now third year of this business. And just getting to the stage that you can order things in bulk is crazy. It's absolutely crazy to me. And I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful for it. Every single rug I sell, uh, you know, gets me to my, my goal of staying home full time. I'm not quite there yet, uh, but I'm hoping by the end of 2023, I will be able to quit all my other stuff and just uh, stay home and do my craft business. Very, very, very excited for that. And another thing that's changed, gosh, it feels like forever since I made a YouTube video, and it, it probably is. I think it was about October, the last time I made a video um, that was anything, um, you know, but shorts. Um, I no longer do commission stores. There's a big love on uh, for commission stores. But what was happening for me was I was spending a lot of money maintaining the stores. So maintaining the stock, uh, maintaining the communications, maintaining um, the payments, making sure that my stock was actually sold, um, you know, just all that. And at the level that I want to get to, I just cannot maintain commission stores. So instead now, I just do wholesale. And 
The wholesale doesn't have to be as complicated as everybody thinks it is. There are a lot of small businesses um, in Canada that will be willing to do wholesale with you. All you need to do is approach them, have your terms and conditions set up, make sure that they're an actual viable business and get your money, get your money before you ship the product. Um, that's how I'm doing it for a small business. Now, when you get to be a larger business, of course, um, there's things that change as far as, you know, they get a six month payment plan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but for me, um, I make sure before that thing goes in the mail, I actually have the money in my account. So I quote the shipping on it. Um, I give them a discount off retail because that's how wholesale works. Um, and then they have a, a, a really, um, I would say moderate buy-in with me. So the first, um, the minimum amount to buy in, first of all, is 500. And then they have to maintain a $250 order after all discounts and before shipping and before tax with me. So it's been great, actually. The stores that I'm in right now have actually been really, really, really supportive. Um, and because last year I took the time to get everything online and to uh, make sure that every single product has a SKU and a barcode, uh, it's been really easy for them to order from me. And I think that's made all the difference. So um, because I also have the SKUs and the barcodes on the products, they can easily scan uh, the price and the SKU and the barcode into their own POS system. So if you make things easy for a small business, you have to do the work anyway, because I need it for my Shopify store and I need it for my Etsy store, um, then they can get uh, their product in uh, pretty quick. So Now I'm just keeping the camera on a close up here as we go round and round a little bit, just so that you can see how I'm easing things around the corner making sure things are flat. Ideally, I would like to not even iron this rug until the very end. And if I do this properly, I don't have to iron a dang thing. So if you do find that you're having to iron, um, I highly, highly, highly recommend Mary Ellen's Best Press. It works fantastic for this project, and I will put a link in the description for you. You can get that at uh, Walmart. You can get it at your local quilt store. You can get it on my link through Amazon, and I believe I will have a link for it from my uh, Sewing World store as well. So it's the bomb. Get some of that, um, and then everything should lay flat. The idea with these rugs laying flat is that when you wash them, you should be able to pull them out of the washer and dryer and they will just lay back down flat. Um, you know, it might take them a few minutes to acclimatize to the floor and then you can step on them and they're flat again. So this is the goal with my rugs. I've made hundreds of rugs now. And um, yeah, here's some interesting tidbits. You know, as I'm growing my business, of course, I've been doing some coaching and whatnot. And so one of the things I've been coaching on is that you need to do the backwards math on whatever product you're making. So say I make this rug and the rug is, um, this large rug is $145. The largest rugs that I sell are $145. Um, that's Canadian. Now I mark them up a little bit if I'm putting them on my Etsy store so that I can cover my fees. Um, the advertising fees and the transaction fees on um, the Etsy store. So if I sell a rug for $145 and I have to pay to have my sewers sew it, so say that costs me $40. So now I'm at $105. And then I have to subtract my material and I have to subtract my batting and I have to subtract my thread. So if my profit on each rug was say, uh, $50, then all I need to do is times $50 by the number of rugs I need to sell to reach a million dollars. So it's really not that difficult. So uh, one time I was working on a product and the profit on the product was $80. So I would need to, I think it was 12,500 I had to sell. I mean, I could do the quick math. Why don't we do the quick math? Hang on. Yeah, 
I was right. So $1 million, if you're making $80 profit on an item, you need to sell 12,500 of them. That's not that many. It's really not that many. I mean, I'm going to go blind if I sell 12,500 rugs, um, but it's only 12,500. So if, and if you're getting help on that, you're not sewing it all by yourself, right? So price your products properly. Um, put in, um, you know, start doing the math. Start doing the, you know, how much does this cost? How much is the machine? How much is the electricity? How much is the thread? How much is my website? And divide that by the number of products that you're selling and start uh, figuring out what your profit margins are. So one day a few months ago, I made this rug. And this rug I felt to myself was not very attractive, to be honest. Not very attractive at all. I didn't like it. Uh, but I took it out into the living room, which is just down the hall here from my sewing room. And I showed it to my husband. And I said to him, can you believe that I get to sell rugs for a living? I mean, literally for a living. If all I did was sew and sell rugs, I could actually make an, a decent living at this. But of course, I want all the other stuff too. Like I want um, the affiliate income. I want my own designs. I want um, some what they call passive stuff with the print on demand products, which by the way, is not passive at all. You actually have to bust your butt to get any of that. Um, I want the affiliate income. I want the sponsorship income. So I'm just going to work on my business and work on my online um, presence and my offerings until I get everything that I want. But yes, we were quite, uh, we we're having a little giggle about it because it was like, can you believe it? Can you believe I actually get to sew rugs in my basement, make YouTube videos about it, put it on the internet and, you know, show people how to do some things for themselves and it actually pays you back. And I'm finding too, that the more I give, the more I'm getting back, which is karma and, you know, the ways of the universe and all that kind of stuff. But it is so true. Like I've gotten way, way, way more back from this business um, than I put it into it by far. Um, just with all the connections that I've made and um, the other vendors that I now know and the support groups and uh, coaching things that I've done. And it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So three years into this and this is where I'm at. And I'm super dang proud of myself. And I'm so super happy that you guys are all here. So happy. Okay, so this is just slow and steady as we go, right? Slow and steady wins the race. And you know, I'm putting out content on the internet and I actually do very little editing on my stuff, very little. Um, I don't know. Why are we all doing this? Where we have the perfect studio and the perfect outfit and the perfect backdrop and our items are placed perfectly around the room. I mean, come on. Really? I, I did my hair. Um, I did my makeup quite a bit today. And uh, basically, I did that because I needed a headshot. <laughs> so I figured, why not just combine the two? And then I will actually look somewhat decent on camera. But some of this sewing stuff, it's like they have, um, I don't, they have professional setups and I just can't compete with that. So like, I don't have a television crew here working with me. Um, I have a mic. I will put uh, the description in the video for the mic if you want it. And I have a video editing software called Camtasia, which I love to use. And uh, most of my pictures are taken with my um, iPhone Pro camera, which, I mean, that's a blessing, right? That's, that's pretty nice. I get an iPhone Pro camera and get to write it off for work. But um, yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, absolutely everything perfect every minute of the day to do what I'm doing. So 
we're gonna sew this rug round and round until we get to the point that it starts waving a little bit on the outside too. So um, this part of it, it actually goes pretty quick. The middle part, if you've got a nice flat table and uh, a heavy duty uh, machine here, you can just whip these up lickety split. So the thread that I'm using is a uh, 40 weight thread and you can get it from connecting threads as well. It's a beautiful thread to work with. Missouri Star has beautiful thread as well. What else is new around here I can tell you guys about? Um, if you check out my Pinterest, uh, you will see that it looks really, really, really professional. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so my Pinterest, I actually do most of it now uh, with a scheduling app called Tailwind. So it's uh, T-A-I-L-W-I-N-D. And I will put a link in the video description, of course, for you guys. Um, I think pretty much anybody can be an affiliate for Tailwind. And I got... Um, I think it's like the middle package that I got. It is fantastic. It is the easiest thing. It integrates with your, um, basically all of your socials. It integrates with all of your socials, like super easy. So it's just click, um, click and paste your uh, links in for your Shopify, for your TikTok, for your Instagram and Facebook. And then it walks you through the whole process. There's a couple of videos on it. And actually I did a video on this channel as well. Um, I believe I did a video. If I did a video, I'll put a link in. I'm pretty sure I did a video. Super easy to use. If I haven't done a video, I will. And I'll put the link in. But I'll go back and check because I did so many videos last year. I can't even remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure I did one on Tailwind. And that is the scheduling app that I'm using to do that. And another tool that I love to use, of course, is Canva. Yeah, Canva has a free plan and a pro plan. There are, it's just endless possibilities with Canva, really. Uh, buy the pro plan if you can. It's super cheap. And then um, another thing that I love, love, love to use is um, a product called SEMrush, which is S-E-M Rush. And that uh, helps me analyze my titles and SEO for my website so that my products get seen over everybody else's. Because if you can sell all you want, but if you don't put it on the internet right, um, you're not going to get very far. So do that. And for my Etsy store, I use um, E-Rank and Marmalade and um, Google Analytics. So I have all of those integrated as well. And for my email marketing, I'm using Klaviyo, which is fantastic. We love that product. I've said this before and I'll say it again. This is the year that I start my email newsletter list. So when you uh, go to my website, you can sign up for the uh, newsletter and it will have um, all the news about what's new for me, what's going on, where you can find me, etc., etc. And then it will have uh, newsletter only available um, deals. So if you want to know what's going on and how you can get my items um, with special promo codes, you have to sign up to the email newsletter. So 2023 is going to be the year I actually get that going. It's uh, It's been on my to-do list for a while and frankly the list was long. So now last year I set up like all the systems. So I set up, well, systems, I set up all the infrastructure for the systems is what I did, right? So I got everything connected. And now uh, this year is going to be, um, I 
we had some company over for Christmas. So I said to one of my uh, friends that was over here at Christmas time, I'm like, this year is going to be, um, the word of the year is delegate. So even if I can't get it done myself, I am going to delegate some of these tasks. Um, whether that means hiring a VA or, um, you know, giving my sewing people more work to do. Uh, so in my sew, having my sewing crew take more of the sewing off my plate um, so that I have more time to do my tech things, then that's what's going to happen because uh, I know that I can't grow to the level that I want to go to without that email list. And as much as I love uh, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Etsy, I don't own those customers. So if they decide to shut me down, I need a way of contacting people uh, to still get my product in front of more eyes. All right, this is the fun part. This is the part where we can go zoom until we run out of bobbin thread, which is gonna happen in a second here. So as you can see, I'm not pushing or pulling anything. I'm gonna be able to iron this and it's gonna just relax. There's a couple of little bumps that I have in here. But I'm not pushing, I'm not pulling. And then this here is like loosey-goosey. It has to be loose. There can be absolutely no tension on this when you're feeding it in. So I have a table here as well. I don't know if you can see it. So I have a like an L-shaped setup here. And you can accomplish this with a couple of dining room tables as well. So even um, most of us that are doing sewing like this, we have these large cutting mats. Um, so even if you didn't have an inset table, you could put your machine on and then put a few of these mats out, maybe um, two, uh, so that everything's straight and put them up on books that would match the height of your sewing machine. And if you have it in this big L shape, like I do, um, then as this feeds around the corner, it's also not like flopping over this way. Now this bobbin thread is going to run out. So the stores I'm in right now, um, there's a couple of different stores that I'm in. And one is called the Crafted Hand and it is in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, Canada. And another store that I am in is called, oh, sorry, that's the Crafted Keep. Rocky Mountain House is the Crafted Keep. I, I apologize, Jessica. Um, so the Crafted Keep is in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. And the other store that I'm in is called the Crafted Hand, and it is in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. So that's kind of fun. This bobbin uh, bust. I don't like it when it does that, um, but I also don't waste this. I can actually put this back in my machine and re-thread it back onto another bobbin. So it's not gonna be wasted. Don't pull the thread off. Don't just chuck it in the garbage. Every single thing you could save for money for your business uh, will add up, so don't do that. Okay, so this should be the last bobbin that I need to change because there's really not that much left in the basket. And off we go. This is about the time that things get to be a little tricky on these edges. So um, essentially what I do, and let's get pull the camera back here a little bit so you can see and point it down, is as it's coming around the corner, I will gently lift up some of the weight because we don't want this thing, um, we don't want the machine over here pulling on anything, right? So don't do that. Just giving it a little bit 
of a pressure release as it comes around the corner, making sure my feed in is nice and loose. And as you can see, this rug is beautiful. And I really do like how the colors come out uh, when I um, basically chunk the colors together, right? So instead of separating the jelly roll and having, you know, placing them all out and putting one color, one color, one color, one color, and then going back through and repicking them up and sort, you know, uh, sorting them into blue, white, red, red, white, blue. I just let the um, my team there take the jelly roll and pull whatever fat piece from the top. And this is the result um, in this jelly roll. I guess some of them are different, but in this particular jelly roll, they had put the sections of colors together. So all the white was together. Um, this blue and red was together. This dark blue was together. It just gives it a little bit of a different look here, right? So you can see this is starting to, you know, just struggle a little bit with the weight of this fabric. And I am giving it just just a wee bit of help here on this edge. You may need to slow down because if you push, and you'll have a tendency to push at this um, edge here, if you push this, guaranteed this edge will pucker. Guaranteed. Every time. It's the pushing and pulling that affects the waviness of the rug. If you sew it nice and flat, it does not do that. And this is where I also recommend purchasing good quality fabric. Again, I can't stress it enough. I think we all want to do things on the cheap and then it ends up costing two or three times more than it, the project is actually worth in our time, in our tears, in our ripping things apart and taking them out. If it starts off wavy, it will always be wavy. Every time you pull it out of the wash, it'll be wavy. It just doesn't work like that. So as you can see, like, yes, we have a couple of, you know, lifts in here, right? But this is going to iron down perfectly flat. And as we come around the corner, we're not going to push or pull on this. So there's not going to be waves here. And had I not been talking on a camera the whole time, I probably would have noticed a couple of these as well and been able to just adjust a little bit, gone a little slower. I don't want to go too slow because I don't want to bore you guys on the video. I know at this point um, I'm going to be happy putting this rug on my website for sale. So again, if you want to purchase products from me, you can go to the website homestitcherydecor.com and I'm going to pop a QR code in here right now so that you can actually pause the video and then scan the barcode with your phone if you want. Yes, we're getting very techy around here. Um, and then uh, you just go to the website, you'll be on the main page. You can shop the collections right there on the main page. You can shop the tools and supplies that I use as well. All the links for the tools and supplies are there because I'm an affiliate for a lot of the tools and supplies that I use. And this year I'm gonna get sponsors, right? Um, so I wanna share the tools and supplies that I'm using so that you guys can get the exact same results. And then if you wanna shop by, um, product go to the top right hand or top top left hand corner sorry about that top left hand corner click on catalog and then all of the products will come up so there'll be um a product for tea towels for dishcloths soup bowl cozies dish drying mats rugs uh shower curtains so bathroom decor um what else is on there? Uh, tea towels, pot holders, oh, placemats. And there's even a section there now for Christmas. So as I've gotten bit, uh, bigger uh, this year, I really doubled down on my Christmas offerings. And uh, gosh, I'm so glad I did. I actually, I only did one farmer's market this Christmas. So last year I did a whole bunch of markets. 
and essentially what that resulted in was me running my butt off um, a couple of times in snowstorms with all of my things in my car, trudging things through snowbanks because we live in Canada, right? So I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and it can get quite wintry up here. Um, and then some of these markets weren't well attended, sometimes because of the snowstorms and sometimes just because they were, you know, newer, smaller markets. They're not as well known. And I ended up driving home you know, in freezing cold, on icy roads, with very little sales. And if I had doubled down and put my things on the internet and made YouTube videos, I would have sold probably 10 times as much. So that is why, um, if you want to find me, you can find all my items on my website now, which I worked on all year last year. Every single item that I make is on my website once it's ready to go. You can find them on Etsy, some limited products on Etsy. I don't put every single thing on Etsy. You can find them at The Crafted Hand in Kindersley, The Crafted Keep in Rocky Mountain House. And I do have a list there as well of the local stores and farmers markets that I do attend. So I attend the larger farmers markets now. I've busted my bum to, um, <laughs> excuse me, to be able to even get in them. You have to operate at a certain level. Um, you know, professional and be able to maintain the amount of stock that is going to be required to do these markets. So I do, locally I do the Millerville um, farmers market throughout the summer. I do the Millerville Christmas Market in the winter time, and I do the Bears Paw Lions Farmers Market in the summertime. And if you ever want to come and see me at a farmers market, which I love, by the way, it's so nice. Some people walk up and be like, "I saw you on YouTube." I'm like, "This is amazing. I can't even." Um, anyway, uh, there's a list on my website that says local stores and farmers markets, and then each location has a flyer. And on the flyer, if it's a farmers market, is the dates that I'm there for the next year. So this is the end of 2022. I haven't got all my dates sorted out for 2023 yet, so I haven't updated the flyers, um, but they will be there. So come and say hello. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I try to answer each and every one of them personally. And oh, I'm almost done, right? Yeah, we have this much left to go. So hang on, guys. We're almost there. Nice and slow. When you're starting and stopping on these corners, don't give anything a push or a shove here. Just nice and steady. Okay, so again, I'm using a Singer Heavy Duty machine. I used an AccuQuilt Studio. You can get a regular AccuQuilt um, Go machine with the two and a half inch strip dies. I'm using Kellon batting and 40 weight polyester thread and a Schmetz 100 by 16 jeans needle. I've just released the tension here, right? Want to make sure we're, we don't have any tension at this. I mean, you're almost at the end of it. You don't want to mess it up now or you will be pulling it out. Thank you for staying to the end. This is all we have left of this rug. As you can see, it is nice and flat. 
I'm going to give it a little bit of an iron uh, with some Mary Ellen's Best Press. And uh, that's it. That's it for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. Give it a thumbs up. If you like it, leave a nice comment and we'll see you again soon on the Homestitch Decor channel. Bye guys.